I'm not going to lie, I'm nursing a mild chubby one here. My hair, right? One, two, one, two. Buckle my shoe. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Wasn't that sexually attractive? So this is going to be fun, isn't it? I've had no sleep. Uh, yeah. I've been on a plane all night in cattle class. Yeah. And uh, you're high on drugs. I'm high on drugs. Yeah. I have my not recreational, I might add. It's sadly not. No, yeah. I have my wisdom tooth out, so uh, I'm in incredible amounts of pain, but it's mm. masked with a weird sense of. Narnia. No, so I went to South Africa for the NT10 SP, which... Cape Town. Cape Town, mate. How do you make the universally accepted bike of 2016 any better? Cheaper. Put some stuff it, on it. It was almost too cheap anyway, wasn't it? It kind of was, yeah. But you obviously went on the launch of the original bike. Yeah, um, fantastic. both done a fair bit of time in the saddle and it is... It is probably the bike of, well, both our bikes 2016 and uh, across the board for, for many others, like I said. So, so being an SP, that means Olin straight away. Yeah. The first SP was the R1 back in 2006. And of course this MT10 SP, which is electronic Olin's. Yeah. Now that is basically lifted from the R1M. Yeah. And it's got R1M colors. It's got an R1 inspired dash. And pretty much, that's about it for the SP. And with all MT10s this year, you get a quick shifter. Nice. Which is very, very nice. Yeah. Straight off the R1 again. And there is also changes to the map to make the throttle a bit smoother. Okay. Which we found straight away. We got, got off on the ride in the morning and just the initial throttle response. It's not, it wasn't bad, was it? No. But it was a bit it, leery. Yeah, it was, it was still less leery than the R1. Exactly, and this is a, this is a, a notch of a refinement. It's, it's much, much smoother on the throttle initial, open to close, close to open, it's much nicer. Is the electronics package, has anything else come from the R1 in terms of S-penis, or is it <laughs> I said penis. <laughs> S-penis, other than, like, has it got the, any sort of the R1 package? Because the electronics on the standard MT-10 were good, but not in any way close to they're not the no. developments of the R1. No, it's still the same. Still the same. I mean, you, you don't need that racetrack pedigree. Yeah. You know, you don't need all the slide control and stuff. Yeah. Interestingly, it has got an IMU. Okay. But only for the suspension to know what yeah. the bike's doing. And, okay. But it's not for the traction control or anything like that. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'm just gonna make a quick point. I know, like, there was a few comments when we were talking about the MT10 last time, and everyone's like, "Why are you all comparing it to an R1?" And I know Yamaha say this is not a naked R1. No. But. It's not far off it. It's is it? fucking. It is. It's bonkers. Basically. Yeah. So it's absolutely bonkers. Oh, zizzy the bang! This has to be one of Yamaha's finest creations. In fact, it has to be one of God's finest creations. Oh, it's just mesmerising. It's funny, you know, we've got the SP and it's USB and suspension and yet still the most prominent feature, the most sexual feature on this bike is this engine. I'm struggling to think 
of another engine that is superior to this bike. I just, I cannot think of one. I've just unlocked the ABS code. The wheelie was that long that it's disabled the ABS function. <laughs> Winning. The African sun blazing through the mountainous range. That is almost, wow. No matter what you do to that bike, whether you put fair, uh, panniers on it, whether you put uh, suspension on it, fancy suspension, ultimately the engine, that yeah. engine is the masterpiece. It's the heart of it. It is it? the heart of it. And I, I hate that phrase, but you're right, it is the heart of it. And I, I particularly like this engine because it's got instant power, instant mm. torque everywhere. Yeah. And it just makes you want to do stupid things and wheelie it. And even more so than the R1, because like I said, the power is at the bottom and it's at yeah. the mid-range and you know exactly you just, it's just there. And the wider bars, the yeah. kind of helps with stability. It's a bit, feels a bit safer. Yeah, yeah. Rather than trying to, you know, clutch up a 180 brake sports bike. I can't think of a better engine than this motor. Mm. Can you, can you? Well, I mean, most, let's, for someone, you're obviously a more professional sort of racer rider. You can, you can pick up the little sort of nuances of an engine. For me, it's just the noise. Yeah that that thing makes yeah. and for lots of other people out there I think that's an important part of yeah. what it makes you feel because as soon as you turn it on you get an instant like idea of the character of what it's going to be and but no, yeah. say the noise everything about it yeah every single bit of that motor attacks the sensors yeah. and it is just intoxicating yes have they um, changed the seat at all because that's probably my one of my only real world issues they had this annoying little nipple on it and it was really thin. Yeah, I mean, we'll come on to the, uh, the touring edition that was announced later on, but yes, the seat is probably my only dynamic gripe with the bike because it says so thin. After half an hour, mm. and it my kind body of, was and in it, tatters. And it kind of puts you in one place and you kind of have to stay there. I... Like, it's not very, <laughs> it's not very long. No, no, I, I, I kind of, I don't, I don't agree to that point. No. But um, I, I see what you mean. But the, the little bit, but it, I, it helps. You know, when you when you've got the throttle pin and you're clicking through the gears, yeah. especially with that quick shifter now, it's just like pop, pop, seamless, yeah. seamless. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it just yeah, just just stupid. Is it attractive? This is the this is the thing, and interestingly, this is one of very few bikes where cosmetics and the lust for the looks go out the window. Mm. This, is, this bike sold out across yeah. the globe last year. The Yamaha could not make enough of them. You look at it and you go, it's not really a sexy bike, is it? No, but it's kind of um, sort of sexy in a different way. Stealthy, sort of almost military, military spec future cop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's not sexy, is it? No. No. But Brutal has never been sexy. No. So let's get on to the suspension, shall we? Okay. So obviously it is changed, there's tweaks from the R1, um, sort of software changes to make it a bit more pliant and a bit more usable for, mm -hmm. for a roadster, for a naked roadster. And it is, there's no escaping it, it's firm. Mm. You know, the stock bike is, although it's not amazing suspension, it's not yeah. world class, but it's, it's good enough for the road. Yeah. It's easily. Yeah, bit of that sort of wallow. Yeah. And um, sort of, um, front back sort of mid yeah. corner but it's quite comforting isn't it yeah. it, feels like it's, it's it's, it doesn't I don't think it took away anything from the bike no. because it's not ultimately designed to be lean angle centric it's like you know back wheel stuff yeah. on the gas yeah but no it's uh, it does everything the R1 does you know there's support on the front and the brakes and the biggest thing for me is corner exit and just you know of course we don't have these sexy roads in, uh, in the UK that we did have, have in South Africa but just the way it doesn't squat and you can just drive it on mid corner and it doesn't run wide. That's the big, mm -hmm. That was the biggest sort of thing for me. Yeah. Um, you've got two semi-active modes. One is the stiffest, two is the softest, but it, they're still very similar. Mm. They're just a, the number two is just a little bit more compliant over bumps. Uh, and then you've got three manual settings. Okay, so you can go in like on yeah, the R1 and exactly. change all the yeah. things in the graph, yeah. which we'll put on the screen now probably. 
Does it feel more direct? Is it just a bit plusher? It's not, I wouldn't say plush, it's definitely firmer. Yeah. Um, and the support is there when you need it. Yeah. But there's no doubt it feels, with that firm, firmer ride, it's a bit more sporty. And, you know, the, the, the stop part is pretty decent as it is, isn't it? Yeah. You can ride it like an absolute tool. And you, you, you need something pretty good and a pretty good rider to beat that yeah. on a road. Yeah, you know, you've got to be, absolutely. So, but yeah, it adds a little bit more sort of sporty, sporty ability to it. But it's not, you know, it's quite marginal, really. Yeah. I suppose really the key for this bike and that suspension system is just the ease of adjustment. Yeah. Because rather than like, hang on a minute, like go home, like yeah. clicks on. Oh, does the app work as well? Because on Good the question. R1, it's got an app. Yeah, I don't know. I don't we'll find out. Because that's actually, I mean, if you're a proper nerd, you can sit in a cafe and go yeah. blah, 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 and adjust the suspension yeah. on your bike. So rather than like, oh, you know, we're going to do some hardcore street riding, whatever, sitting there with screwdrivers and Allen keys. Yeah buttons. On the standard one, the criticism I had, apart from the seat, was that the brakes seemed a little substandard in terms of feel yeah. for a bike that is that fast and yeah. you need to stop it pretty quick. I mean, they will stop you, absolutely, but it's this sort of detachment between what's going on down there and what's happening up there. Then there's no changes. Okay. And now and again, when you're really on the vinegar stroke and you're really giving it the beans you you want a bit more power and a bit more bite mm. and you say it's just there's something about the Yamaha brakes are just a little bit wooden aren't they uh, even with the you know with an R1M and any any yeah. other sports bike it's just a little bit wooden and I can't it's a shame but I suppose putting Brembo's on there and another form of brakes would put money onto it, and I just, it, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's a lot of money as it is. But I know, and it, I mean, it, but it's the, I guess, you know, the brake systems are so complicated now. I mean, you know, you look at all the ABS cables, you look at going into a pump, like from a wheel to a pump to a system, back up to the, I mean, it, there's miles of cables. Yeah. Not miles, but a long, it's not just there's a cable that splits into two and you do that and it operates the brake. No, it's, there's a lot of technology that goes into it that might actually be a victim of its, of its sort of shortfalls in many ways. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. But yeah, there's no, the brakes are still the same. And yes, if there was one area of the bike uh, that could be improved, it's definitely, definitely the anchors. Good morning from Cape Town. It's hot. It's going to be interesting because I sweat when I'm wiping my ass at home. So uh, 32 degrees of heat should moisten me up lovely. So we're on the uh, Tora edition this morning. It's a little amuse-bouche. It's the, uh, the fries before the double cheeseburger. It's the Tora edition before the SP, the main event later on. Oh. So the Tora edition was announced yesterday, a bit of a surprise really, no one knew it was coming. Oh, I just did then. Oh, naughty little thing. I ain't got enough room mate, sorry. So we've done over an hour in the saddle now and guess what? It's still an NT10. The screen's nice, the screen does a good job. Uh, obviously it depends how tall you are because it's not that tall itself. But it's helped me so far. The seat is, is the winner for me. Uh, over an hour, no issues at all definitely much comfier than the uh, the stock seat as we were there in uh, in Cape Town an utter shock really but Yamaha announced the Tora edition okay which is essentially a kitted version of the standard bike so you get panniers sort of soft luggage you get a screen which is pretty decent yeah. Uh, you get the hand guards, which is obviously more for cosmetic and superficial. No, I, no, I, 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 I value hand guards considerably. Do you? Yeah. Just in case you go brushing past wind mirrors. <coughs> no, and a winter ride, like a cold ride. But they, they, they're, they're, they're not. They're not. They're not proper ones. I, I can't see them helping out in minus three. Uh, well, no, but it takes the sting. Yeah, it, okay. it does. Well, yeah. I, anyway, I like them. Right. Comfort seat. The comfort seat, which is the key. Okay. That saved, I mean, I rode, we rode all morning on the 
poor edition, mm. not one body lift for any okay. comfort. As soon as we got on the SP, after even like 10 miles, it was just like, piles are playing up mm. big time. But you can, I'm assuming you can buy that comfort seat exactly, for the yeah. SP if you yeah. wanted to. And there's no, you know, some comfort seats, they look a bit orthopedic yeah. and a bit sort of, a bit sort of yeah, incontinent a pants. Yeah, yeah. 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 But there's not, it, it looks like a, a normal seat. Yeah, good. How much does this bad boy cost? Because so, it was so cheap last year. Yeah, I mean, the stock bike for this year will cost you 10,799. Okay, so that's 800, 800 quid pound. more. But you obviously you get the quick shifter and the, 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 the tweaks, the, the refinement. So, yeah, I mean- like, and, it, and prices are going up across the yeah. board, aren't they? Yeah, so, so the SP will is 13,399. So 13, three. Two and a half so, grand more. So, so is it, it worth it? This is it. I think for the majority of people, it probably won't be worth it, but it's the lure of having the SP. The SP. Pulling up at the traffic lights, you've got a stalker and someone comes on the SP and it's like, Meh. yeah. And it's got the polished swing arm and it's got the, oh, nice. okay. it's got the, you know, the arm and paintwork or style, you know, colors and stuff. So there's a bit, you know, and the dash as well. But is it two and a half grand more? Probably, probably not, but it, 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 it's a very, very, very good bike. Mm. And then reality, on a PCP deal, it's gonna cost you an extra tenner a month. Yeah. So. The Tora version is 11,649. 15, no. No, just a, a grand, grand more. more. 900 yeah. quid more. Yeah. Which ain't bad. No. And that comes with luggage as well. Yeah and a big screen, and a comfort seat, and a quick shifter? Yes. Quick shifter stand across all yes. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, some of you have been asking the question about the Tracer. If there's an MT7, MT07 Tracer, or Tracer 700, mm. there's a 900 Tracer, and the Yamaha engineers are still adamant that we're not going to see a, yeah. a, a, a big boy Tracer, hence why I think they've released this as a bit of a relief to the, to the sort of the, yeah. The, the Yamaha Easter. Is that a word? Do you need it? I think the, whatever you do to an MT10, whether you put fairings, uh, a massive exhaust, electronic suspension, make it into a tracer, it's still going to be a lunatic bike. Yeah. It's still going to be an MT10 at yeah. heart. Which we like. It's nice. Nice. On that note. Bye. See ya.